Hello my crafty friends. Today's video is a little longer than normal but it is my full process of decorating a junk journal that I made for a design team project for Louise Heinzel. I do have a separate video of a full page through of that journal that I'll link um, in the description of this video. There's no right and wrong or a certain way that you can decorate a journal. This is just the way I do it. And I thought I would film the process just to show you how I did this specific one. So on this first page, I've done um, a little bit of green painting, just very roughly with some acrylic paint. And then I'm doing some stenciling with some gesso. Now the kit is um, very green. It's called Lost Green Scraps. And I wanted it very um, chunky and sort of rough looking that is why I sort of went with this kind of feel you'll notice I have a lot of layering I generally enjoy layering in all my projects and especially in this one as I wanted to have it sort of all the elements I want them sort of spilling out of the book and you'll see as I go through what I mean I like them sticking out and very rough you can already see in this one I've got some white tissue paper that I've used and I've used the edging actually hanging off the page I'm just doing a little heart out of a just a page like a storybook page I'm edging it in green and then I'm just layering the different colors and textures in the background I'm using a little bit of green thread here this is the same thread that I used to bind the book with pamphlet stitch I'm also doing a little bit of stamping and then I also use a little bit of black thread because there's a little bit of black throughout the kit. So I wanted to bring the colors into this page too. So it's quite a large section of the page that is decorated, but there's still space for journaling. And you could always add additional tags on top that you could put with a paper clip if you wanted even more journaling or space for journaling. Here I'm attaching an index card that I decorated. I do have a separate video for that, which I'll link in the description where you could also decorate your own index cards. This page is going to have a pocket. I'm going to do a double pocket with vellum. As you can see, I'm not cutting anything straight. I'm just sort of ripping it with a ruler because of the feel of the book, of the journal. It's quite rough. And there I have stitched it with the sewing machine. Just some black stitching around and then I'm going to ad adhere it to the page with some double sided tape. For the tags inside the pockets, I'm going to be using these cutouts from the digital kit. So I'm just backing each one with some cardstock, just with some like a matching color, which can be the back, um, the back side of the card where you can do the writing. I'm keeping it quite plain because there's so much other stuff going on in the journal and it's quite busy. I thought I'd keep the actual journaling cards quite plain and simple. I'm just going to add a little tab for the card that's going to go in the back pocket and I've just used some printed, um, I think it's a report card that I found on Pinterest. I just printed that out and I've stitched a piece of it with some stitching and put that into the pocket. And then I have all little bits and pieces that I stick on. That's just some trimming from another piece of cardstock that I stuck on there. And now I'm going to make a snippet strip. Um, I think it's what you call it. So I'm just taking a strip that's going to fit on the page and I'm just putting all little bits and pieces um, just all together. Now, this is a good way to use up little scraps and you can make it actually very, very interesting. I quite enjoyed making this and you'll see I've made it a couple of other times in the rest of the journal. As I want a lot of texture, I'm using a piece of tool there. It's a little difficult to see because it's white and fine, but it 
makes a really beautiful texture and then I've just stitched it down with the sewing machine just one one row sort of down and attaching it with the hot glue gun and there you have a beautiful edging for your journal I don't have a pattern or a formula of how I decorate the pages. I sort of just page through and where I think it needs something, I will add it. And you'll see I'll go all the way to the end and then I'll go back again and sort of re-add a few um, elements as I go through the book again. I always wonder if you ever really know if a journal is finished or if you could still add more. I suppose you could just keep adding and adding. But um, I do go back and forth. You'll see me paging through and just seeing uh, I don't want like too many blank pages in a row so then I'll add a few additional elements here I'm just splashing a little bit of acrylic paint just to bring the green color through to these pages very plain but very effective some paper ruffles I've made heaps of paper ruffles and it's a great way to use them so I've added them here and here I'm just going to make a little pocket this paper that I'm using with the flowers I've also used on the cover of the journal so it sort of links it and um, brings that color through very rough I haven't cut anything it's just sort of ripped and I'm stitching just I'm sorry I'm just sticking with double-sided tape the right and the bottom I've added a little ruffle and then I'm going to make a little tag to fit inside this tag that I've used here I found once I finished it it didn't really suit this specific pocket so I've used it elsewhere in the journal and I've used then another um, journaling card that I made for this pocket Just did some stitching with the sewing machine, just a double row and not very straight. I've purposefully gone a little bit sort of wobbly around it. I do like that rough look. This kit had a lot of additional elements that you could add, which was really great for the style that I wanted to do. So again, I'm just adding a little bit of green acrylic paint just to bring that color through. And then I'm adding just my layering again with just different elements as, as I go. I'm just edging it here with the watercolor pencil that I dip the point into some water and then just go roughly around the edging. I do that quite often, usually with black, but with this one I've just done with a little bit of green. I quite enjoyed doing this journal because I didn't really spend too much time thinking about what I was going to do. I sort of just went from page to page and just did intuitively what I thought would look nice. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. You'll see me go and cover up or change a few elements as I went. But in the end, I think the overall look 
um, worked out. Here is another of the index cards. Also, um, like I said, I have a video for that. I'm going to create here another um, snippet strip. So I'm just using some encyclopedia paper for the base and then just a little bits and pieces again uh, like the first one. going to add another pocket here. I've added a ruffle at the bottom of this pocket and it's made from tissue paper from a dress pattern. I love working with those and they make the most amazing ruffles. So I've done um, that just at the bottom and it's got some black writing on which um, gives even a different um, depth and texture to the ruffle. You'll see I use the word texture a lot. I do love texture and everything that I do. Here I've just taken a little spatula and um, used the gesso just to smear down, just to give it a rough look. And then I've used a watercolor pencil in green just to scribble up and down. I've left some of it smudge, some not smudge, and it gives it a nice sort of background, uh, background feel. This is just an index card or a flash card that I used from a previous project. I was just testing the ink and it actually came out quite nice. So I'm going to use it for that. I've put a little bit of black watercolor pencil around the edging and I'm sticking it on like a tab on the page. But it's also great for journaling because it's got the lines and it's big enough to journal. So it can work for as two things.
another double pocket here using an element from the kit and then that report card that I printed it's like a light green that I sort of just got off Pinterest so I'm just using that as the the one layer of the pocket and then the element from the kit as the second layer I do love double pockets I think they're just more effective plan I mean single ones are fine too but for this one um, I did prefer the double because you can put a few more tags inside This little receipt that I've put in with the number 47 is actually sort of a little bit of a signature that I do in all my journals. I have a receipt book and each journal gets a number. So I would know that this is my 47th journal that I've made. And then in the receipt, in the actual book part, I actually would write what the journal is. So I sort of have a bit of a record of what I've made. It's just something that started when I first sort of started making journals and just thought it was a good idea sort of to keep track in a way. The string didn't work, so eventually I ended up using a tissue paper ruffle that I stitched on with the sewing machine as the top of that little tag. For the tags that come with the digital kits, you can always attach it, the design side to just a cardstock to make it more sturdy. I've decided just to stick two together so they're double sided. So it's a little thinner than normal, but I think it works fine and I like that it's double sided. I'm just going to add a little bow out of Hessian string and I've just stapled that onto the top. When I do my tabs, you'll see I, I close the book. I sort of just do that just to measure how far it's sticking out. So it's not too far out and it sort of aligns with the other bits that are sticking out of the journal. For the spine of my journal, I'm just going to add this Hessian like ribbon that I found. I love the texture of it. I've used also a little bit of it in the actual journal, but I wanted to cover the spine with that. So I'm just using a bit of Mod Podge because uh, it dries clear and it's not sticky once it's dry. I'm putting quite a bit on because there isn't a lot of the ribbon surface really, sort of in between the little grooves just to make sure it adheres well and it actually just fits perfectly on the spine. So now I do a second flip through the pages and I go through the book again and then I just sort of add again as I think um, I need. This is just some ink. It's Tim Holtz, um, the inks, spray inks, but I'm just using them sort of without the spray. Uh, putting onto an acrylic block, spraying some water and then just smearing it on and um, it blends the color really well. I quite like that.
I'm now just adding little accents as I go. So I'm not really doing big things on the pages, just adding little bits and bobs here and there, a little bit of color, just to um, bring it all together. I'm purposefully making things hang off the page as you can see the bottom the top and the side I wanted a really really chunky spilling over journal um, and I think I got that effect with all these bits hanging off um, I really do like how the little elements are sticking out and make it for a super chunky journal Now just some finishing touches. I sort of keep closing the book and just seeing where there might be gaps. And I'm just adding like a little tag like this, a little tab, just from an old calendar with some hot glue, just a bit of extra color, sort of just a few little tiny um, additions and we're nearly done.
I'm just going to fix this page up a little. I'm not quite really happy with it. So I'm just adding some gesso with a piece of cardboard, just scraping it on to give it a rough look. And then I'm just going to add this little element and then some little stamped circles just to bring through the circle theme. I've got a few more elements from the actual digital kit that I'm going to add just to bring the contrasting colors. I do like this brown with the black that is from the kit and it contrasts really well. And then I'm going to add a few other elements and I'm going to use, I'm sticking them down first with some double sided tape. And then I'm going to use some glitter washi tape in a green that I really like just to make it look like it's been stuck on like that. I don't use the washi tape just as to adhere it because I find it doesn't always hold so I first glue it or tape it down and then I just use the washi tape um, just for decorative purposes.
to close the journal, I'm going to use some seam binding that I've dyed with some inks, just different color greens, just to give it a, a mottled look and kind of tie it into a bow. And there we're done. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and learned some little tricks or have got some inspiration to work on your own journals please subscribe to my channel um, i have some more videos coming up soon i'd like to thank you again for watching and see you again soon bye